You know, I've always been kind of sad that ESPN almost never talks about baseball anymore, but then they put out a clip like this. We're going to make this out to be an epic at bat. Did you see the headlines today? Epic at bat. Incredible moment. What? Yeah, but why? Because they're teammates? I mean, and Trout does nothing but strike out. That is blasphemous. And then the cherry on top, they put out their top 100 players going into 2023, and they have guys like Kyle Tucker at 38, Bryce Harper at 58, and then Matt Chapman at 82. This list makes no sense. Starting off the video at the number 100 spot, we have Eloy Jimenez. And apparently according to this list, it says that Jimenez has changed his diet, giving up red meat while eating more chicken and salmon. And apparently that is enough to get him in the top 100. Now, all jokes aside, I fully believe that Eloy Jimenez could be a 30 double, 30 home run guy when he's fully healthy because not gonna lie, he's kind of a right-handed version of Jordan Alvarez. He is one of the better pure hitters in baseball. So putting him in the top 100, if he can stay healthy. I'm cool with that. Hey, Oscar Hernandez at the number 99 spot. Okay, so it looks like they are definitely going to prioritize a defense in this list because Teoscar Hernandez and Eloy Jimenez, they're both known for offensive tools, so there's not really much else to talk about. Again, they're prioritizing defense heavily so far. Back-to-back -back Seattle Mariners, we have Logan Gilbert. Now, one thing about Logan Gilbert is he's trying to throw harder going into 2023, even though his fastball was one of the better fastballs in baseball last year, if we're talking about starting pitchers but for me the reason why they probably ranked him so low is because his off-speed pitches are not the best hopefully a full spring training and another year in major league baseball can progress those off-speed pitches i'd probably rank him a little bit higher not gonna lie 98 feels a little bit low because he was nasty last year as a rookie the fall from grace is real lucas giolito was one of the worst starting pitchers in baseball last year. I was not expecting that, but kind of the trend for Lucas has been, he's really good, then he sucks. He's really good and then he sucks. So by that metric, I mean, I guess he's ranked too low because he sucked last year. According to the trend, he's gonna be really good this year. At the number 96 spot, they have Ketel Marte. And the only reason why is because the power dipped last year. He did have 42 extra base hits. Also, the speed wasn't there as well, only five stolen bases. But you're talking about a guy who in a down season had a 321 on base percentage and a 106 OPS plus. It, it might be a little bit too low. Ketel Marte, when he's playing like prime Ketel Marte, is one of the best players in baseball. Cabrian Hayes, he probably was robbed of a gold glove, no disrespect to the vacuum that is Nolan Arenado. I'm not sure if they were trying to preserve his gold glove streak, but Cabrian Hayes, he was robbed. Again, that's just my opinion. Offensively, there are a lot of questions and holes in regards to Cabrian Hayes' game in the batter's box. I'm hoping that he fills those holes because if he does, 95 is going to be an absolute travesty. He could be a top 50 player by the end of 2023 if he puts everything together. Wilson Contreras signed a big boy contract this year, five years, almost $88 million. I have no problem in the world with him being on this list, but not gonna lie, 94 feels a little bit low. It's it feels disrespectful. Maybe that's just me. I'm gonna sound like a baseball nerd because sabermetrics really go into why I love Dalton Varsho, one of the best defensive outfielders in all of baseball. He can play catcher and he is an extra base machine. I feel like everything I just said is ultra valuable to a ball club. He's probably ranked really low because we haven't seen it in back-to-back -back seasons. But for me, Dalton Varsho in a stacked Blue Jays lineup, he could be a top 60 player. That's just me though. Okay, so here's where another metric is coming into play. So obviously they factored in defense with Teoscar Hernandez and Eloy Jimenez and now it looks like they are factoring in health concerns because Luis Robert Jr. whether you say Robert or Robert I don't think that he cares so say whatever you want he is a true five tool megastar when healthy but the reason why he's at 92 is because he can't stay healthy I don't agree with him being at 92 just based off talent but if we're talking about what we think Production-wise is going to happen going forward. Maybe you're factoring in that health and he's only going to play 80 games or something like that. I guess, maybe, you might have a point. But if we're talking about pure talent-wise, Luis Robert Jr., I mean, he's in the top 30 for me, talent-wise. So it looks like the Mariners are going to have a few starting pitchers in the top 100 because we saw Logan Gilbert, we saw George Kirby. Both of those guys are not as good as Luis Castillo. So George Kirby being ahead of Logan Gilbert, if you're a Mariners fan, you might disagree with that. I just really love the fact that George Kirby Kirby, he's got the off speed down and he throws absolute gas. Yeah, I'm cool with him being ahead of Logan Gilbert, but George Kirby ahead of guys like Luis Robert Jr. I'm 
I don't know about that. At the number 90 spot, we have Willie Adamas, and he did have 31 home runs last year, but maybe they're holding him back because he had a 298 on base percentage. I mean, as we can see from last year, he still had a four and a half war on baseball reference, a 112 OPS plus. He was very valuable. So 90, is that disrespectful? Maybe it's not because he wasn't the Willie Adamas of 2021, but ever since he's been traded to Milwaukee, he's been a completely different player. 90 feels too low. Again, I tried to warn you guys, this list stinks. Jose Abreu at 89. Now, I guess they are holding him back because of age and father time. Now, the only argument that can be made against that is Paul Goldschmidt, a first baseman. He was 35, 36 years old when he won at the MVP last season. Jose Abreu at 89. What do you guys make of that? Ooh, Tyler Glass now, one of the biggest question marks in all of baseball, not only because we have questions about his health, but also we have questions of whether or not he's going to be on the raise in the second half because he is a prime trade candidate. He is a free agent after 2023. So when you combine his free agency and his talent as well, he's going to want sky high money, but the Rays, they never spend money as evident by their largest contract ever was just recently to Zach Eflin. Talent wise, I feel like that's fine. But again, injury is a large part in why he's ranked so low. Style Marte, say what you want about what he's done in the past because he did get popped for steroids. But over the last three or four years, he has been solid. 86 for me, maybe you guys are going to say that's fine considering he is getting up there in age and his athletic abilities are going to fade. But 86, again, just like pretty much everyone we've talked about, it's it's weird. Kevin Gosman at 85. I mean, Kevin Gosman's really good. I don't agree with that necessarily. Does this say Randy or Rosarena at 84? That does say Randy at 84. I mean, everything that I've seen from Randy, um, he is a 20-20 threat in the making. That means 20 home runs, 20 stolen bases. The defense, in my opinion, is getting better. The eye test, I know I'm not using Sabre metrics, but he had 41 doubles and 32 steals last year. He is a playoff performer. He did it not only in the World Series and also that entire postseason, but just recently in the WBC. Everything that I've seen Randy, this could be the first time that he goes off for 30 home runs and 30 stolen bases. I guess ESPN just doesn't believe in my guy. Luis Arise is one of the best contact hitters in baseball, and he was showing off that power for the first time ever in his career. He had two home runs in a single game. I know it technically doesn't count because it was in the World Baseball Classic, but for me, this is a win-win trade. The Twins, they get Pablo Lopez, a much-needed opening day starter, and the Marlins, they get a guy who absolutely rakes Luis Arise. 83 seems fine. I feel like this is a good pick. Matt Chapman, at 82, I hate that ranking. He is definitely still top 70 to top 65 because we know what he does with the glove. I know that Oakland Coliseum, it did help out his DRS because that foul territory was so big that he was able to make plays that no other third baseman could make because the stands were in the way. He was still pretty good defensively last year. He had a bunch of home runs. I feel like Matt Chapman is severely underrated by this list. He's still top 65, top 60 to me. The reason why I like Matt Chapman is because he's top 2% and not chasing at balls outside the strike zone and also he's top three percent in hard hit percentage he's top seven percent in average exit velocity everything is screaming for matt chapman to have his best season in 2023 kyle schwarber at 81 now in the past i have kind of criticized kyle schwarber for being a one tool player because he's not very good at anything aside from hitting baseballs a very very long way and he's probably the best aside from pete alonzo and aaron judge at least that's my opinion kyle schwarber in mlb's list they had him in the top 50 but he ESPN has him at 81. I feel like he's probably in the middle of that in the top 60. I don't have him at 81. I don't have him in the top 40. But yeah, this is just ESPN being ESPN. Yeah. You Darvish at 80. I guess Padres fans would probably push back on this and also the general management of the Padres would probably push back considering he got a six-year, $108 million extension. I mean, I don't have a problem putting you at 80 because he's so hit or miss for me. He's nasty, but he has a blow up start every so often and he's just not very reliable. How dare you disrespect Stephen Kwan? Now he's kind of the opposite of Kyle Schwarber. We know that Kyle Schwarber, he's not gonna do that great with the glove, but he's gonna hit prodigious home runs. Stephen Kwan, the exact opposite. He is a gold glover in the outfielder. He's gonna get on base at a high clip and just hit single after singles, maybe a few triples in there with some doubles. The home run pop, definitely not there and people are expecting him to regress. However, the getting on base, that is a real 
ability. Joe Musgrove, just the head of Stephen Kwan. Um, I saw what he did in the playoffs last year. He seems like a big game pitcher that is not afraid of the moment. Now, if we're talking about the regular season, I believe that he's currently injured right now, so he could be higher. But again, this list is really factoring in injury. Like, no joke, that seems to be their number one criteria. Pablo Lopez at 77, not the most exciting player to talk about, but very productive, very nasty. He wasn't as good in the second half of 2022, but having him at 77, just ahead of Joe Musgrove, that's gonna ruffle some feathers, not gonna lie, because I feel like Joe is better than Pablo. Tristan McKenzie at 76, one of the better young pitchers in all of Major League Baseball. Not really much to talk about because I'm gonna be a fanboy. I would rather have him higher up on this list, but 76, I guess that's fine. Nestor Cortez at 75, do these guys not know who Nasty Nestor is? Nasty Nestor has a 2.61 ERA and a 9.5 strikeouts per nine over his last 251 innings. That is a big time sample size if you're asking me. I would probably rank him higher. That's just my opinion. If I say that's just my opinion one more time, please come over and slap me. I gotta stop saying that. Of course it's my opinion. Ozzy Albies, ooh, at 74 ahead of Nasty Nestor. Now, I believe that Ozzy Albies could be a guy that could get back in that 30-30 club conversation. I know that he's not gonna be on base a lot because he strikes out a lot and doesn't take walks, but apparently his goal is to go 40-40. That is not 40 singles and 40 walks. That is 40 home runs and 40 stolen bases. Some lofty goals for Ozzy Albies. I don't think that he's better than Nasty Nestor. Corbin Carroll? He's played, what, 13 seconds in the big leagues now? I understand that Corbin is one of the most talented young outfielders with the sneaky pop, the gold glove defense, at least it's in the works. He also has that insane sprint speed. Corbin Carroll is gonna be good. Just ranking him ahead of guys that we've already talked about, uh, they have a lot of faith in him. Good for them, that's, you know, a lofty take, and I tip my cap to that. I respect how aggressive they were with this pick. Just ahead of Corbin Carroll, they have Gunnar Henderson. I mean, what's not to love about Gunnar Henderson? He's got the lettuce. Every time he hits a home run, his helmet falls off. The lettuce is flying everywhere. He's just a cool baseball player. He's young. He is going to be a mainstay for the Orioles for quite some time. If it wasn't for Ali Rutschman, he would be the face of that franchise. Logan Webb, okay. Um, I don't really know what Logan Webb did last year, so let me take a look. Ooh, a 2.9. ERA with an almost five war. Now he didn't strike out a ton of guys, 163 strikeouts and 192 innings, but he had 32 starts. I like Logan Webb. He's a dog in the playoffs. Okay, what was his ranking again? 71? I'm actually cool with that. In fact, I feel like he might be a little bit too low. He's a dog. Christian Javier at 70? No. No, I don't wanna give this negative energy any more of my time. I am moving on because Christian Javier at 70 is far too low. Bobby Witt Jr. Bobby Wood Jr.'s ceiling is fantastic, but after everything we saw from Christian Javier in the regular season and the playoffs last year, Bobby Wood Jr., I know that he is an exciting young guy, but he does have raw tools if we're talking about pure sprint speed. He's up there with Trey Turner, and power-wise, he's one of the better infielders in baseball, but for me, I would probably take Christian Javier for 2023 sake. I feel like Bobby still has a few holes that he has to fill if we're talking about not chasing and getting on base better. Also, his defense was atrocious. Yeah, that's... It's the 69. This was not a very nice pick. That's a cool picture right there for Brandon Nimmo. 68. I feel bad that he has a sprained knee and ankle. Again, this came a few days after he said that he's sitting out the WBC because he wants to stay healthy. The baseball gods, that timing was just mean. So he's going to be on the shelf. I don't know if they're factoring that into why he's low because Brandon Nimmo, he's a top 60 player to me. He's very good offensively. He gets on base at a high clip. He plays gold glove defense. He's really good on the bases as well. I like Brandon Nimmo. He's too low. And who is it? Is this Jose Altuve? Nope, nope. Whoever made this list is still stuck in the past. They're thinking way too much about what happened in 2017. Whoever made this is a Houston Astros hater. 67 for Jose Altuve. I don't even want to react to the rest of this list because it's terrible. Again, injury seems to be the number one factor in this list. Sean Murphy at 66, uh, fine, that's cool with me. A lot of people don't like Marcus Simeon because of how terrible he was to begin his career with the Rangers, but check this out. In the second half of 2022, he had 16 doubles, 13 home runs, and a 118 OPS+. plus. Those are pretty solid numbers for a guy that plays gold glove defense. All right, here's probably the final time that we have to bring up criteria because injury issues and health concerns, that is the number one thing. They're not really talking about talent, but maybe they are because Byron Buxton, when you're giving him the benefit of the doubt, putting him at 64 is maybe generous. A lot of people have him outside the top 100 because he can't stay healthy. If we're just talking about production and also talent, Byron Buxton could be a top 
10. Get the comments going. I don't really care. Byron Buxton, when healthy, is one of the most talented baseball players I've ever seen. The platinum defense, the top 1% sprint speed, 40 home run potential with 40 stolen bases. Sue me. Byron Buxton, he's too low. Do I have to repeat myself over and over? What is with these low rankings? Okay, yeah, maybe they have some health concerns, but 63, are you on crack? Brian Reynolds, dude, can I just like go quickly through this list because this is getting bad. Tim Anderson at 61, a lot of people think that he's slightly overrated because the slugging isn't really there, but after what I saw in the World Baseball Classic, Tim Anderson, he is just so much fun to watch and it really seems like his number one passion in life is baseball. Like he loves baseball, he wants to get better and better. I could see Timmy going for 40 doubles and hitting 315 this year. He's good. Ooh, they have the cover boy ahead of Jazz Chisholm Jr. Let me try and make a case for putting Jazz in the top 60 because I actually agree with this. But Fuzzy, he's only had a cup of coffee in the big leagues. Well, let me tell you what he did in 60 games in 2022. He made the all-star team. He was on pace to have a 30-30 season in 60 games, 14 home runs, 12 stolen bases. He had a 330 on base percentage with a 140 OPS plus. Yeah, say what you want about Jazz Chisholm and his cup of coffee, the fact that he hasn't proved anything. The dude can straight up play baseball at an elite level. Emmanuel Classe, I am happy to say that he is in the top 60. Fully agree with that. As a Guardians fan, you can pretty much go to a different channel or turn off the TV every time that he comes in, knock on wood so I don't jinx it, but Edwin Diaz should be next. No, Edwin Diaz is not next. They have Bryce Harper at 58. No, no. Even if Bryce Harper lost his left pinky toe tomorrow as well as his right kneecap, he is still a top 20 player in baseball regardless of health. I would rather make a list based off talent as opposed to projecting stats going into the next season. I just feel like that's way more fun and that's a little bit less aggressive in my opinion because Bryce Harper outside of the top 20, that's just disrespectful and in my opinion, blasphemous. Jeff McNeil, okay. Uh, <laughs> so when you're going for Bryce Harper to Jeff McNeil, no disrespect in the world to Jeff McNeil. He's a utility guy. He's up there with Luis Rise as one of the best, if not the best contact hitter in all of baseball. But Bryce Harper and Jeff McNeil, they're not in the same stratosphere. So that's all I'm gonna say on that. Cedric Mullins at 56, um, this is pretty aggressive. This is this is very aggressive, in fact. Brandon Woodruff at 55, as much as I like him, the fact that I thought injuries were gonna be a big part in this and the F Clayton Kershaw being so low, I feel like Clayton Kershaw and Brandon Woodruff, they're kind of in the same conversation. Brandon does throw harder, but they're both nasty. Uh, 55 is cool, but that means Clayton Kershaw's ranked way too low. Who's next? Dansby Swanson. I don't know. A lot of people hate this guy. He does have great hair. I don't, that's not a metric. Hair or X grit, anything like that. But if there was, he'd probably be leading baseball in those two categories. Dansby Swanson at 54. I mean, he was amazing last year. I'm cool with that. In fact, he might be a little bit too low based off last year. Matt Olson at 53. All I'm going to say is look at his spring training stats. I don't care that it's spring training. Matt Olson without the shift, when you factor in his gold glove defense, he's going to be a 40 home run guy. He might win a gold glove. And that's not even me being dramatic. Matt Olson, he's that talented. 50, Jeremy Pena. Oh, okay. So maybe I can't even use the Astro hater excuse, but he's not better than Jose Altuve. Does he have a higher ceiling than Jose Altuve? Probably because he's ultra fast. He's got the gold glove defense. He does have the power, but he chases so much. He's not very good at getting on base. Again, he's quick. I love everything about Jeremy Pena. His makeup is incredible, but he's not better than Jose Altuve. Come on. Alec Manoa at 51. I am going to scroll past this because what even is that? He's the opening day starter for the Blue Jays who are a juggernaut. Yeah, he's not 51. He's top 40. I mean, I'm not trying to make Braves fans mad, but I feel like Braves fans are usually pretty good fans and they're rational. I mean, Spencer Strider, no matter how much he bursted onto the scene last year, I would take Alec Manoa. This guy is fearless. I mean, Spencer Strider is fearless as well. That mustache probably gives him even more dogging him, but yeah, there's no stat for dogging him. Bo Bichette at 49, if he can get that defense, even just 10 to 15 to 20% better. Bo Bichette is gonna go down as one of the all-time greats if we're talking about infielders. He has a chance to go 30-30, if not 40-40. Don't quote me on that, but he does have the tools if he stays healthy for 160 games. Andres Jimenez, okay, I I'm gonna sound like a hater right now because I am a Guardians fan, but what I saw from Andres last year, it was still pretty good, but his on-base percentage was severely boosted by him getting hit at a pretty frequent level. So he gets on base because he gets hit a lot. The defense is insane along with the sprint speed, but with the stick, it was inflated. I'm just gonna throw that out there. I expect regression from Andres. He's really good, but I'd still take Bo Bichette over Andres. Will Smith, because he doesn't say a lot of words out loud, he's kind of like the Paul Goldschmidt of 
catchers in my opinion, someone that just shows up every single day, he does his job, he is severely underrated still, even though he plays for the Dodgers. He's clutch, he's a good guy, but putting him in the top 50, thumbs up from me. Julio Urias at 46, I mean, Again, I know that stuff happened off the field. I don't know exactly what happened off the field because there are conflicting stories, but Julio has been so, so productive, so, so elite. Yes, I'm gonna give him the elite tag over the last few seasons. I'd put him in my top 40. Zach Gallen, the most underrated pitcher in baseball. Check this out. Last year, he had a 2.54 ERA with 192 strikeouts in 31 starts. That was incredible. Now, he did kind of have a blow-up season in 2021, but he fixed it. So if we're talking about his career, he has an even 10 strikeouts per nine. He's been top 10 in Cy Young twice. Uh, dare I say 45 is too low? Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, this is witchcraft. At this point, sorcery is being uh, spun right now and I am going to skip this. No, 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 Dylan Cease, I love the guy. He's not better than Jacob DeGrom, I'm sorry. I am skipping past this. Framber Valdez, okay. You know, even though he's not better than Jacob DeGrom, I love Framber Valdez. 42 is cool with me. Michael Harris is um, very, very talented. Would I take him over Framber Valdez right now? Everything that I've seen from Framber just screams that he's gonna get better and better. He's the new ace for the Astros. I love watching Framber Valdez pitch. I feel like he's just a tiny bit more valuable going into 2023 because I'm gonna sound like a boomer because I kinda wanna see Michael Harris do it again. He did have a slight chase issue, so maybe getting on base is gonna be more of an issue once Major League Baseball figures out his weaknesses. But everything that I've seen, he's a five-tool superstar in the making. Love him at 41, actually. That's not bad. I would just put Framber ahead of him. So maybe I'd flip-flop him. Corey Seager at 40. I mean, by the end of this season, without the shift, I, I, he could be back in the top 30 easily. So 40, I guess that makes sense considering everything that we've seen, but uh, Alex Bregman at 39, what do we make of that? I mean, honestly, my, my gut reaction is that's too low. And then obviously we know his teammate. What are we doing, ESPN? Matt, did, did Mad Dog Russo make this list? Kyle Tucker at 38, what more could you ask for for a guy that hits 30 home runs, steals 20 bases, plays gold glove defense, he's clutch? No, let's move on because that's, Luis Castillo is really good. He's not better than Kyle Tucker. I'm sorry, Luis, one of the best starting pitchers, nasty. He's got that changeup. If I'm talking about the best changeup of my lifetime, him and Ricky Romero, they're in that conversation, but he's not better than Kyle Tucker. Shane McClanahan, hold on. I feel like I need to educate people who are brand new to baseball how good Shane McClanahan is. He had 194 strikeouts and 165 innings, basically, with a 2.54 ERA. He's basically a smaller version of Randy Johnson. Like, if you put Randy Johnson in the dryer machine and forgot about it and left it on too long and he shrunk, he would be Shane McClanahan. Adley Rutschman at 35, so even though he is a young buck, I mean, obviously, Adley Rutschman is one of the most talented prospects we've ever seen. He's a catcher that gets on base at a 360 clip. That's nuts. He had 13 home runs in 113 games with an almost five and a half baseball reference war. The pitching got better once he was called up. The team got better. I mean, he's a true leader. Carlos Rodon is almost 40 spots ahead of his teammate, Nasty Nestor. I don't think that 40 spots separate Carlos Rodon and Nestor Cortez. Now, do I believe Carlos Rodon is incredible? Absolutely, he deserved every penny of that deal. I just uh, feel like him and Nasty Nestor are kind of the same, aside from the velocity. Carlos Rodon can throw 100 in the seventh inning and not really think twice about it. Zach Wheeler at 33, that means that Aaron Nola has to be somewhere uh, Max Fried at 32, he is very, very good still. I feel like a lot of people don't talk about him enough. Wander Franco at 31, wait, is Aaron Nola gonna be on this list? So Shane Bieber, I'm gonna sound like a hater again, a Guardians fan talking crap about the Guardians. I would take Zach Wheeler just ahead of Shane Bieber because I like the stuff of Zach Wheeler in terms of just the velocity. He has that crazy off-speed stuff as well. Shane Bieber's curveball is fantastic. I hope that his velocity gets a little bit better this year. Wander Franco sandwiched in between a bunch of pitchers. Um, I'd move Wander down just a little bit. I would take Zach Wheeler ahead of him just because even though I love Wander's potential, I, I gotta see more. I do. Pete Alonso at 29. I have no gripes about that. One of the best power hitters of my lifetime. I'm cool with that. Xander Bogarts at 28. Uh, that's a little bit too low. Xander Bogarts was one of the best players in baseball last year, regardless of position. A little bit too low, in my opinion. Max Scherzer at 27. Who, what? Aaron Nola? Ahead of Max Scherzer, I am not trying to sound like a Phillies hater by, you know, kind of clowning on Kyle Schwarber or Aaron Nola. Aaron Nola at 26, I'd probably move him outside of the top 30 because for me, I still feel like Max Scherzer is better than Aaron Nola. So that's just my thought process right there. Fernando Tatis at 25. I mean, when he was healthy and not, 
you know, taking supplements or having a balanced breakfast, if you want to call it that, because technically he did pass every single steroid test while playing. So again, on paper, technically all of his stats are considered clean. But yeah, Fernando Tatis is going to be back in the top 10 by the end of 2023, bet on it. Carlos Correa inside the top 25. Absolutely cool with that. I feel like the reason why we're going through the top 50 a little bit quicker is because these make a little bit more sense. 60 to 100 was super confusing, but yeah, I have no issue with Corbin Burns being 23 Corbin Burns his second half was a little bit uh rocky to say the least and that's why the Brewers did not give him a lot of money in arbitration he came out he was not happy Corbin Burns is nasty I would put him in the top 20 maybe even top 15 so he's a little bit too low Justin Verlander at 22 too low JT Romuto at 21 I'm cool with that. JT, very valuable player. He might be the most athletic catcher we have ever seen. So Rafael Devers at 20. That second half, it was worrisome, but I have no qualms about him being in the top 20. Rafi absolutely rakes, and I'm happy that he got his money. 10 years, $313 million, good for him. Garrett Cole at 19, nope, he is not better than Corbin Burns. I'm sorry, I don't remember. Corbin Burns was at 23. Garrett Cole, I would still take Corbin ahead of him. We have Austin Riley making a push for the top 15 just barely misses because Austin Riley isn't very vocal he kind of just does his job and goes home you might not know that he has back-to-back -back 30 double seasons with 30 home runs he has back-to-back -back seasons with a 135 plus OPS I mean last year it was 142 he's been top seven in MVP two consecutive years this guy is a Hall of Famer in the making knock on wood he legitimately looks like Mike Schmidt I mean Nolan Arenado is the modern Mike Schmidt because of the defense but offensively you guys know what I'm trying to say Francisco Lindor at 17 no issue with him being in the top 20. I'm cool with that. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. because of his improved defense. Now, I think that he did regress from last year's rankings. I think he was maybe in the top 10 because he was a monster when he was competing with Otani for that MVP. His defense is better. He deletes baseballs when he makes contact. I'm cool with this one. Jordan at 15. Nope. Nope, not gonna give that any more of my energy. I am skipping that because he is not 15th. Ronald being outside of the top 10. Talent-wise, he's up there with Fernando Tatis Jr., Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, Aaron Judge. So if we're talking about talent, too low, but because he's coming back from that ACL, he didn't look his best self when he came back, but he was still very good in my opinion. Defensively, now that he's gonna be you know, a little bit healthier, I feel like his defense is gonna pick up. J-Ram at 13, again, I am skipping that because Paul Goldschmidt outside the top 10. What is this list? Sandy, I love him. The, the NL Cy Young winner, he was unanimous. He's not better than Paul Goldschmidt or Jose Ramirez. Uh, Nolan Arnato at 10. Um, okay, Mookie Betts at 9. He is not the ninth best player in baseball. He's definitely still top 5 or 6. They have Trey Turner ahead of him. Um, I'm not going to argue with that because of what I've seen in spring training and in the WBC. Julio, whoa, whoa, whoa. Julio Rodriguez, he's definitely top 25 in my opinion, but he's not better than J-Ram, Trey Turner, Mookie Betts just yet. The potential's there. He can be the next Willie Mays. I see a right-handed version of Grady Sizemore, so I would want to be biased towards my favorite player ever, a new modern version of him, but no, I mean, no, no. Seven, too high for me. Juan Soto at six, I'm cool with that. Freddie Freeman at five. Now, Freddie Freeman's definitely a top 10 player. I don't know about number five. I'm getting heated. Manny Machado at four. Okay, I, I love Manny Machado, so I'm cool with him being in the top 10. Is four a little bit too high? Maybe. I'd probably put Mookie Betts at four and Manny Machado at nine, just ahead of Nolan Arenado, but you could flip-flop Nolan and Manny. I'd have no issue with that. Aaron Judge at three. <laughs> that means... Mike Trout at the two spot, so they do have the fish ahead of the judge, which is crazy considering he is the AL home run king all time. I mean, technically speaking, Mike Trout has never had an Aaron Judge season because Aaron Judge, last year, he almost put up an 11, maybe even an almost 12 F4 season, which Mike Trout has never done. So technically, Aaron Judge's peak is higher than Mike Trout, but then again, they are factoring in Mike Trout's full-blown athleticism, the fact that even at 31 years old, he's still top 5% in sprint speed. He's got the stick. He missed 40 games and still had 40 home runs and obviously Shohei Otani I mean he gives them so many clicks if he was not the number one player I mean ESPN might go bankrupt honestly they might be out of business so that took a whole lot longer than I expected I am sorry but also that was a lot of fun so if you guys want to see longer videos where we criticize or just critique and review list let me know in the comments down below make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button thank you all so much for watching until the end if you did if you did I mean I love you straight up thanks for watching and be safe